In his second letter to the church of Corinth, the Apostle Paul described the agony and pain of living with a thorn in his side, which had become the obstacle in his life. When Paul asked the Lord to remove the thorn, God responded, my grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. As we celebrate the graduates today, let us remember when all seems dismal, when we feel like hope is lost, God's grace is still more than sufficient. Graduates, you've overcome challenges and made sacrifices to arrive at this moment. The path was not easy, but through God's grace, through the support of your loved ones, through the encouragement of Coastal Alabama family, you've accomplished many of your goals. Today, let's give thanks and let's celebrate your commencement. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you humbly. Thank you, thank you first for your grace. We know that your grace is more than enough to cover our iniquities, to remove any obstacles, and to move us forward in life. We thank you for these graduates, Lord. We thank you for their families, and we thank you for everyone who supported them through the years. We pray that you continue to bless our administration, our faculty, our staff, our students, and our distinguished speaker. And Lord, as we celebrate today, we ask you to continue to watch over us and show us your love, your grace, and your mercy. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Good afternoon. We're here today to celebrate a milestone day in the lives 
of our graduates. A milestone day is one of those very, very special times in our lives that, that in my thinking, there are only around 20 of them in our lives. And of course, each life is different and each of your lives may have different milestone days, but we all share some in common. Uh, the day of our birth was a milestone day, the day, the day that we pass away and uh, they, they, we go on to heaven. And I'm sure looking at this group tonight, we're all heavenly bound. So, boy, you're a solemn group. <laughs> this is graduation. This is a celebration, folks. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. I'm having a good time. This is the, my, the high point of my year. Graduation day. Even though this is my third graduation this year. Yesterday, I was the uh, graduation speaker at our uh, northern campus up in Monroeville. And just three or four hours later, I was the graduation speaker of our Eastern campus, campuses in, uh, Jeff, uh, in, uh, in Bruton and Atmore and other places. So yes, this is an exciting time. It's a, it's a milestone day. Your date of birth, the date you leave this world, the date that you accept Christ as your, as your savior, the day that you get married uh, for some Maybe the day that you got divorced. Uh, uh, you know, so I'm, you, you seem overly joyous about that. Uh, uh, you know, the day that you, uh, uh, you, your first child was born, and then your second child, and you grandparents. The day your first grandchild was born, and then those that followed. This is one of those days. And graduates, you will have many of them. And only you control the number. You make your own milestone days and your, through your accomplishments and your lives and your, your achievements. Um, the door is open and it's there for you. Listen, I'm an old man. Uh, some of you probably have guessed that by now. Um, and I've attended many graduations I'm 75 years old and I've been around on this earth for 27,300 and I think 56 days. Uh, I read where the average lifespan is of an American male is 70 years, which means that, that that's 25,500 something days. Uh, I'm living on borrowed time. So I need to enjoy every day. And I'm enjoying this day, being with you and being a part of your milestone day. I would guess, since I've been a higher education administrator for over 50 years, it's the only thing I've ever done other than be a paper boy in Birmingham when I was a kid, Birmingham News. But I have been a higher education administrator for 50 years. I've been president here for going into 38 years this fall. And prior to that, I was a dean at Troy at the University of Georgia, uh, Abraham Baldwin. Uh, I, I, my, my career has been blessed. And in all of that time, and at working at all of those colleges, I would put myself in the top 10 nationally for having attended as many graduations as anybody else in this country. Yeah. And I'm just as excited about this one. I'm just as excited about this one. Graduates, you're going to be uh, graduating today from the largest community college in Alabama. Do you know that? All right. Based on credit hour production, the official number is that according to Coastal Alabama's credit hour production, Coastal is the largest community college in the state of Alabama. And 
larger than most of the four-year schools in credit hour production also. Listen, to get here to this day, uh, to, get, to get to this special milestone occasion, uh, graduates, uh, you, you, although your chests are puffed out and uh, you're justifiably proud of yourselves, uh, there are others who helped you get here. And I think it's only appropriate that we recognize those who inspired you, encouraged you, who wrote the check for you. <laughs> yes. These people helped you get here. And just as it is a milestone day for you, it is a milestone day for them. And it's a milestone day for me and this faculty and staff. There is a great sense of accomplishment on our part and pride when we look out and we understand that, hey, we were a part of conveying our knowledge, our experience, our training to you so that you can be at this point and that you can build a life that's made of many, many, many more milestone days. So let's, let's take a minute and recognize those of you who had a part. Would all the parents of our graduates please stand? Come on, parents. How about the grandparents? You stand. Come on, grandparents. Look at that. How about you children of these graduates? Why don't you stand? I know we have some grandchildren here. You grandchildren, please stand. If you had a part in their lives, husbands, wives, spouses, How about you brothers and sisters, all you siblings, you, you stand. <laughs> I know we've got some aunts and uncles out there. Why don't you stand? Any cousins? Come on. <laughs> How about you girlfriends and boyfriends and fiancés? Yeah. How about you friends? Look at here, Brad, look at the friends who came out. And in this group, how about you in-laws? Any of you here? <laughs> now this next group uh, who really had the primary role of getting us here today, it's our faculty and our staff. Uh, I don't care how beautiful our buildings are and how well equipped those buildings are and uh, and as you can see, we have, uh, we have about $10 million worth of construction going on campus uh, that's just started and will continue through the summer and part of next year. Uh, how beautiful your grounds are, how great your athletic teams are, how many awards that you win. Uh, the faculty and staff. These are the folks who got us here. These are the ones who studied at night and graded papers and prepared for the next day to get the class rows ready or get registration ready or get this meal out here ready today with these faculty members to, to look at their notes, uh, uh, write new notes, change their lesson plans, 
pull from their knowledge and their education and their experience and on a daily basis standing in front of you to impart that to you so that you will be here today. I take great pride in my role in that, but I am humbled by the part that our faculty and our staff plays. You know, I have, I hired every faculty and staff member at Coastal Alabama Community College. I did. All of these guys up here, and, go, and, and not guys, guys in a non, in a, in a, <laughs> I tell you, you, things are so politically correct over, you know, you, you have to think before you say. But every one of you, every one of you, I had the privilege of meeting with you and talking with you and, and, and uh, offering you an opportunity to work here. You've all made this institution what it is. You all have. And I am very proud. I am very proud that you've let me be a part of you in this great endeavor teaching and sharing to others what we know and what we can do. Faculty, stand up and let all of us show you our appreciation for what you do. Hey, I would like to welcome everyone. Some of you may not know me, but my name is Cassidy Harding and I was your 2018 SGA president. I was also on the cheerleading team. And I just wanna start by saying that Coastal Alabama has given me the best two years of my life and I have the people sitting in front of me and the people sitting behind me to thank for that. Um, if you would have asked me two or three years ago if I would attend Coastal Alabama or if I would even attend a community college, I probably would have said, no, that's not for me. But I was getting ready for cheerleading tryouts and I broke my ankle right before I thought I was going to try out for a big university and my dreams to cheer at that big university were crushed. But one of my former cheerleading coaches looked at me and he said, have you heard of Faulkner State at the time? And I was like, no, I haven't, I've never heard of that because I'm from Birmingham and I didn't know that it even existed. And I was like, well, I don't know about that. And he kept pushing me. So I decided to come down here and try out for the cheer team. I got offered a full ride and I decided to come here. Um, I moved in two years ago in the fall and it has been the absolute best two years of my life. There's no doubt in my mind that God led me here for a reason. What I thought was going to be the worst thing turned out to be the best. God works in some crazy ways, but sometimes he has to break you to make you a better person. Because of God's faithfulness, I ended up at Coastal Alabama and it has been the absolute best two years of my life. Coastal has opened up so many doors and given me so many different opportunities and best friends. I have gone on many leadership and cheer trips and I truly believe Coastal has made me a better person. The professors, janitors, lunch ladies, and the rest of the faculty here are all amazing. And I never thought they would be able to impact my life in such a positive way, but they know almost every student here personally and they want to see us succeed just as bad as we want to succeed. I would really like to thank Celeste Robertson for being my role model. You're an amazing person and the person I strive to be like. You have made me into the woman I am today and I'm so grateful for all your advice and help with everything. Next year, I'm excited to announce that I will be attending the University of South Alabama. I can only pray and hope that my next step in life will be as great as my time at Coastal. I'll be moving on to the University of South Alabama to finish what I have started here. I am also excited that I will be able to continue my cheerleading career as a South Alabama JAG. I will always be thankful for my time here at Coastal. And as we all move on to bigger things, I would like to wish everyone the best future. Jeremiah 29 11 says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And although we may not know exactly what the future holds, God does and he always has our best interest in mind. Thank you.
And in the introductions I, 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 I had just a few moments ago, I did want to give a special welcome tonight to, uh, we have, uh, for the first time, we have uh, graduates of uh, our new aviation college here with us, and they'll be walking across the stage. Uh, they've joined us now, and they're a part of Coastal Alabama Community College, and, and we're now in the business of aviation education with a campus in Mobile on Brookley Field and a campus in uh, uh, Fairhope at the Fairhope Airport. So you aviation students, a special welcome to you for coming over and letting us celebrate this day. And we have some of the, uh, the aviation faculty and staff here who, who are not on the stage. But will you guys from aviation who are on that faculty and that staff, would you please stand and let us recognize you? Yeah. Um, recognize, next year, we're going to expect you to be in your caps and gowns and be up here and, and enjoying this. How about that? Uh, it's my privilege, and uh, I just, uh, just a personal thing. Uh, I have some very special guests here today, the Krikorians. Their son, Tyler, is graduating, uh, and uh, their, the grandmother and the mom, Ron, and uh, the mom, Debbie, and the grandmom. Uh, known them for many, many years, and I share especially in the pride that you have. And I have watched Tyler this year grow and become such an outstanding student leader and an outstanding young man. And he didn't become outstanding after he got here. He was outstanding because of the nurturing and the parenting that you did prior to his arriving. Uh, I'm going to introduce our speaker now, and I'm really, this is somebody that I've known for, for many, many years, and uh, holding the highest esteem and respect. And I'm going to give you some of the, the factual statistics, and then I'm going to just say something personal. But our speaker today is Representative Alan Baker. And Representative Baker was elected to the Alabama House of Representatives in 2006. He's a native of Bruton, and he graduated from T.R. Miller High School in Bruton. And he attended East Central Community College in Decatur, Mississippi, and received his bachelor's degree from Auburn University with a major in history and a minor in political science. Representative Baker devoted 27 years of service to public education as a classroom history teacher. His education career began as a teacher coach in Phoenix City, Alabama. He eventually reaffirmed, returned home to Bruton where he taught history and coached football and track at T.R. Miller High School. During his tenure as a coach, and this is something really outstanding to me, and I didn't know this until just reviewing this today, uh, Representative Baker teams amassed 10 state championships. In, in his tenure there. Two different teams, five, five na national championships were won and uh, five national championships in football. I mean, you almost have the same proud tradition as uh, our great coach at Alabama, uh, Nick Saban. And uh, I say that deliberately because <laughs> Representative Baker is an Auburn graduate. And <laughs> so, right <laughs> Yeah. I opened that door. <laughs> I opened that door. I'm constantly reminded about, you know, talking about it was my pleasure and honor to employ all of these people. That when you get to looking at it on paper, uh, I've employed, I think, more Auburn graduates than Alabama graduates. Now, you can read into that what you want. But <laughs> so. Listen, Representative Baker is married to his high school sweetheart, Kaki Stokes Baker, who is a retired teacher and uh, a realtor. They attend First Baptist Church of Bruton, where he is an instrumentalist in the praise band. Uh, shortly after his election to the state legislature in 2006, the, those members in the legislature who were musicians they quickly drafted Representative Baker into the band. I've heard that band play on 
on many occasions. And uh, uh, Representative Baker, uh, you still play the drums? Yeah, yeah the Ringo Starr. I'm, okay. While serving in the legislature, Representative Baker has especially focused on economic development, workforce development, and education issues. He has served as the governor's appointee on the Southern Regional Education Board. And with his passion for workforce and economic development, uh, Representative Baker was appointed to serve on the Alabama Workforce Council and the State Workforce Development Board. He um, also serves as the uh, Joint Chairman of the Legislative Committee on Economic Incentives. Having retired from public education, Representative Baker has dedicated his energy and his focus to activities such as full being a full-time legislator in this district. I can tell you as far as the representation of our college, uh, he is a full-time legislator. He's always there. Let me tell you what, what happened this past year, in the, just in the past months, it shows you above all of these accomplishments, Representative, I watch you this year. And uh, one of the coastal Alabama family members, her young 16 year old daughter took her life in November, Laura Burks. And uh, Laura will be with us, and she wanted you to know this, she will be with us for the afternoon graduation. But Laura right now is appearing before the grand, uh, grand jury and offering testimony. And hopefully the bullies that were responsible for her daughter's death will be appropriately punished. And it will be a light all over this state and nation, this piece of legislation. Representative Baker led the efforts to pass a, this bill on bullying with Laura Burks. It is the first legislative act in the history of Alabama that addresses bullying as bullying. Yes. It's called the Bullying Act. And with the leadership of Representative Baker and the, and the courage and strength that it took Ms. Burks to work on this, many, many lives will be saved because this new law will become a model for the United States. It offers real punishment, requires it for those who are bullied and who are bullies. Yes. In my opinion, and I just alluded to this, one of the most important hallmarks of leadership is results. For coaches, leadership is measured by the records of the athletic contests. And I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed that you've won and your teams have won 10 state championships. For politicians, leadership is measured by the uh, results of their elections and getting reelected. Too often the emphasis is too much on that, not so with Representative Baker. For teachers, leadership is measured by their students' test results and their graduation rates and their successes in life after they leave here. For soldiers, leadership is measured by the results of the battles that they were in and the battles that they won. For ministers, leadership obviously is measured by the number of new converts and increased church membership. For business leaders, leadership is measured by sales results and product production. For journalists, leadership is measured by increases in circulation and advertising. 
It is abundantly, it is abundantly clear that our speaker tonight is a leader. He is a visionary. He's a patriot. And most importantly, what I've learned from Representative Baker, and for those of you who have had an opportunity to get to know him, most importantly, he is a gentleman. He is a gentle man who loves and cares for those that he serves. So it's with honor and pleasure that I present to you as our graduation speaker tonight, Representative Alan Baker. I turn this over to you. Greetings. To uh, Dr. Branch, uh, thank you so much for the very kind words. Uh, as I stated, I guess it was yesterday afternoon at the graduation in, in Bruton, as I had the opportunity to just make a few remarks at, at that graduation, although Dr. Branch delivered a very eloquent commencement address for, for that particular ceremony. But uh, as I said, uh, and this is something that's, that's so impressive to me, and I'm in such admiration to Dr. Branch, and that is his zest for life, his passion for people, his enthusiasm for in his leadership in anything that he's involved with. But uh, uh, Dr. Branch, it's been such a pleasure to be in support of you in the role that I'm in now, but as, as much so just the, the friendship that we have as well. But thank you so much. Uh, to the uh, faculty and, and staff, of Coastal Alabama Community College. Uh, Dr. Branch has already given uh, significant recognition, but I want to also applaud the magnificent work that each of you do, the service, uh, just the instruction that's provided, the growth that is provided in not only professional career development, but as much so personal growth as well. So thank you so much. Uh, you do magnificent work here at this institution and uh, in providing uh, so much uh, in the educational arena to all of, of these communities and, and the region that, that that, uh, is involved here. Uh, to the graduates, um, it does appear very much so that you're very excited. I can tell from the look in your eyes uh, that, that you are very proud to be a part of, of this ceremony. Uh, I'm proud to be with you in this, this particular ceremony as this is, as Dr. Branch alluded to, a milestone event in your life. You certainly have every right to be proud and to feel good about yourself, this institution, and the collective body of people that are assembled here today in support of you. To all the family members, the extended family, and also the friends and other guests, I thank you for the support that you provide to your graduate in being here today uh, as they are being recognized for this significant accomplishment and the uh, diploma that they will receive today. But before I share with you really the more serious and heartfelt commencement address, uh, it has become a trademark tradition of mine at past graduations, particularly here, uh, to be able to share some amusing, lighthearted quotes from assorted sources and some names of which you will recognize. So as not to break from my trademark tradition, here goes with my collection of quotes. From comedian, country comedian Jeff Foxworthy, I have never been jealous, not even when my dad finished fifth grade a year before I did. <laughs> From Robert Orban, a graduation ceremony is an event where the commencement speaker tells thousands of students dressed in identical caps and gowns that individuality is the key to success. <laughs> Mark Twain stated, I have never let my schooling interfere with my education. Gary Bolding stated, your families are extremely proud of you. You can't imagine the sense of relief they are experiencing. This would be a most opportune time to ask for money. <laughs> and from Dr. Zeus, you have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. 
You can steer yourself in any direction you choose. You are on your own and you know what you know. You're the guy who will decide where to go. And now as I return back to really the more uh, serious and, and commencement address that I prepared for the, the graduates, uh, I want you to recognize that this is a stepping stone to your next chapter in your life as you, to, as you continue to progress uh, towards your career path or advancing in your career path. I do encourage you to seek out and express gratitude to those that have invested in your lives, the multitude of people that have done that. Uh, I know Dr. Branch has made reference to that, but I, I, would, I, I would strongly encourage that you recognize the role that so many others play in your life. Of course, the faculty and instructors uh, behind me were a strong part of that, so I hope that you would reach out to them in that strong way. But you have others as well, such as community leaders, you have your family, you have friends that also have been a support to you. So I would, I would hope that you would recognize the value that they have for you, the investment that they have placed in your life, as they do strongly care about you and concern for your future. To all the graduates, have you heard the term BP? BP, the, the two initials BP? Well, for some of us here along the Gulf Coast, particularly the coastal counties of Alabama, then we've heard of uh, the BP oil spill, British, British Petroleum Oil Spill, so that may be one reference that BP is used. For those that are uh, maybe involved with sports, you perhaps have heard BP as batting practice for softball, for baseball. But the way I'm going to use the term today in this address is involving BP as best practices. Best practices. It's very commonplace, whether it be in government circles with various departments, agencies, commissions, or even in the private sector, just in, in business, or in the education arena that there are those that will look, that is, away from where they actually exist, but looking to what others do in terms of best practices, hoping that maybe they can borrow or maybe implement, mimic some of those best practices, and that way maybe they will have some of those same successful outcomes. So these aren't just sort of these best practices are some things that maybe that uh, might work, but they've actually had proven results that have worked for others. And so that's really the thrust of what I would like to share with you today on a very similar wavelength would be to be an encourager to you in providing a challenge of several proven best practices and quality traits to pursue for advancing in your personal growth, but as much so for your career. Sadly, there are those who do operate their lives in a very shallow, superficial mode of waiting for something good to happen that propels their life into something greater. But on a positive and uplifting note, I want you to recognize that with, within each of you, including myself, is a best practices, personal power that enables you and I to be able to control our own actions, to make choices, to overcome adversities, and to conquer seemingly impossible challenges. Many people find this source of strength through a personal power, through prayer and faith, or one's spirituality, a connection to a higher power. In addition, there's a very strong source of personal power within you, your attitude. I've, I have observed this attitude trait often through my life experiences. Attitude is such a critical factor for success or for failure. How a person handles adversity shapes their attitude. Adversity is preparation for success. Sometimes there are those who love us who attempt to lessen the sting of adversity or shortcomings by making excuses for the undesired outcome. Just as steel sharpens steel, so does adversity serve to toughen, shape, and develop our inner core. Our inner core consists of our character, our values, our attitude, and faith. By the way, you don't have to go looking for adversity to become a stronger person. You won't even have to wait very long as adversity is always lurking just around the corner. 
The obstacles or challenges that you have no control over, meet them head on. And don't make excuses for less than desirable outcomes. I can share with you in my coaching experiences that uh, that was one of the things of which in any programs which I was part of, I did not want to hear from either the athletes or even the parents. So if there was a less than desirable outcome, I didn't want to hear, well, if it had not rained, if, if this person had not gotten injured. It's where I, I think that those become crutches, not just in that somewhat athletic arena, but I think in life as well. That when we have adversity in life, that does help to shape us and build us for future opportunities where we can take a look back, take a step back, and try to see what we might could do better or improve on so that we might would have that desired better outcome in the future, but not making excuses so that doesn't become a crutch that perpetuates continued excuses for less than desired outcomes in our future. Since attitude is such a critical best practice as human trait that can be shaped, there are several positive components of attitude worth, sh worth sharing that are best practices. This includes, in shaping your attitude, having passion for life. Recognize that life is a gift. You want to live it, enjoy it, share it with others, celebrate it, and make life more fulfilling for others. People that create a positive approach in most any situation they are confronted with will spark healthy attitudes around them. In having that attitude, best attitude, have a heart of service. Have a willingness to sacrifice for others, to make life more than just what you get out of life, but how you can elevate the lives of others around you. In shaping that attitude, have character. Have some substance to you. Be a rock an anchor that holds secure when the adversities, the winds, the waves, the difficulties of life threaten. Have an attitude with vision. Set a course. Have a target towards which to aim. I'll share a personally, well, several times of doing this personal experience. I remember as a young boy, as I was uh, afforded the opportunity to be a part of gardening, not only uh, did my parents enjoy farming, that is a portion of our property, but as well on my grandparents' property and also on my aunt's property. So when it came time for the planting season and the ground had been tilled, uh, I recall taking the push plow once again. So this wasn't a huge fields, but still enough that it was uh, some considerable work for myself. But taking that hand plow, and I remember my father coached me, directing me so that I could maybe perform the job more efficiently and better. And that is directing me how in setting a stick at the end of the row, instead of just trying to just strike out and begin to have that straight row as best I could, and of course it would zigzag if I did not have some type of mark ahead to use that I would be focused upon. The other thing I remember my dad teaching me was don't look back. Don't keep looking to see what's behind you. And that's such a life lesson. I think too many of us sometimes, we want to look at what we don't have in life, and we want to look at what others have about us instead of looking ahead at what we can do and what we can become. But anyway, that's where I, I do recall that that just sort of made an impression on me, that that's somewhat more of a life lesson as well. Then set a course and keep your eyes focused on that. And then life does seem to be I guess, more straight, uh, although there's still adversities along the way, but it does create a better path for us. As I've stated, attitude is such a critical factor in making the most of our lives. Actually, the circumstances surrounding our lives are less important than an outcome. Rather, our attitude is what seems to be one of the most important factors contributing towards success. And I'd like to share a story which made a great impression on me involving attitude and how I think that sometimes that uh, we don't recognize the power that in that attitude does definitely shape an outcome. I'm talking about towards one's life. There was a study, and as a story then that I, I will share with you, there was a study being conducted by a university professor, a psychology professor, conducting a study with twins, sets of twins. And as the study, somewhat the thrust of the study was somewhat taking a look at these sets of twins that have gone through life, somewhat with some of the same surrounding sort of circumstances uh, that are a part of that life experience, the development uh, process, uh, into maturation to become young adults. 
But this study was done not with young people, but this would be young adult twins, so that that way they could be somewhat part of the study, the psychology professor conducting the study, would be able to have gather this information and be able to, to somewhat take a strong look at maybe what led to the outcomes of these twins that have somewhat had many of the same experiences early in their life, but yet the outcomes might be dramatically different later in their life. Well, one of the set of twins was a set of twin boys, well, now young men, uh, each with their experiences of their father. Their father had been an alcoholic that had meandered from job to job, not considered very successful in the community, just somewhat uh, a, a difficult time in his life, but somewhat, I mean, they're, uh, something that each of the boys did experience in their development at a, a younger level. Well, as this, this particular professor, as he was conducting his interview, and these interviews were done individually with each of these sets of twins, and so with these two twin boys, the interview was conducted separately, but one of the concluding questions that was asked individually to each of these young men and I would mention that uh, the, the young men, one of them went on to become a very successful medical doctor. The other twin boy became like the father, became an alcoholic, and had great difficulty trying to maintain a job. So as the question was asked, somewhat the final concluding question was asked by this psychology professor of this particular set of twins, once again individually to each boy, and as the question was asked of the young man that had not been successful, he followed in the footsteps of his father. And the question that was asked was posed, are there any, contributing, any other contributing factors that you would like to share with me today that you think helped to shape where you are at this point in your life? Well, this young man that followed in the footsteps of his alcoholic father and not having a very successful time keeping a job, he sort of remarked somewhat nationally, what would you think with what would you think or expect with a father like mine? Blaming. Now, when that same question was asked later to the other brother, that concluding question, are there any other contributing factors you'd like to, to share that you think helped shape your life to bring you to this point in life? And he made this remark to that question. This once again was the successful medical doctor. He said, What would you expect with a father like mine? They each gave the same answer. They each gave the same answer, but the attitude was what was different, their perspective of how they perceived the situation. So I want to strongly, to the graduates today, to share that with you, that you do have that personal power. I think sometimes we feel like we meander through life and waiting for things to happen. You have so much power within you, and a lot of that starts with your attitude. A few concluding uh, components of attitude I'd like to just very quickly run through that I think are of great best practices to share with you. Develop an attitude of teamwork. Life involves other people. Learn how to relate to others. Cooperation is a key. Learn to create an atmosphere of unity and working together to maximize the energy and efforts of all involved. Be bold. Have a willingness to defend and stand up for what is right, but what not what is not necessarily is popular. Perseverance, be willing, aggressive, and decisive in attacking the obstacles or challenges before you. Pride, and uh, Dr. Branch made reference to the pride that he takes in, in his work. It is very, very evident, the enthusiasm that he has, and I do challenge you with that characteristic as well. Have pride, take pride in the work you perform. Any job worth doing is worth doing well. Painters and sculptors will often leave a distinguishing mark, a signature to identify their artwork. You leave your positive mark by how you perform your work, large or small task. Opportunities abound all around us to leave positive impressions by how we work. In closing, each one of you is special in having a part in building towards a better tomorrow. Make a special effort to recognize and appreciate those around you who continue to invest in your life. Build and develop that inner power within you through your faith and a strong, healthy attitude which you control. And I leave you with one final graduation qu quote from Orrin Hatch, who said, There is a good reason they call these ceremonies commencement exercises. Graduation is not the end, it's the beginning. Graduates, I love you all. Congratulations.
And now the time we are, have all been waiting on, a time to celebrate our graduates. Will the candidates please rise? <laughs> Dr. Branch, we present to you the Coastal Alabama Community College 2018 candidates for graduation. The faculty of Coastal Alabama Community College certify that these students have fulfilled all requirements of their degrees and certificates. Thank you. What a great and appropriate and inspiring uh, graduation speech. Thank you. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule, uh, Representative Baker, to be, to be with us on this milestone day. This is what you've been waiting for. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the Alabama Community College System Board of Trustees, and upon the recommendation of the faculty and staff of Coastal Alabama Community College, and as a result of completing the requirements as prescribed by the college, it is my pleasure, it's a genuine pleasure, for me to confer on each of you your earned degree. Please step to the front as your name is called, and will the candidates please rise. Yeah, but the graduates, those of you who are not coming up right now, why don't you kind of take your seats so the grandmamas and aunts and uncles and cousins and all those back there can see what's going on. Tywa Whitney Abedee. Sylvia Janae Abrams. Sylvia Janae Abrams. Amanda Rochelle Akins. Sean Michael Austin II. Shannon Michelle Bankister. Stephen Barnes. Trace Barrows. Nikki Berry. Cindy Cox Byrne. Sandy Banucky. Marilyn Boyington. <laughs> Jamie Rose Browder. <laughs> Valencia Brown. Brandon Dwayne Buchanan. Cool 
Robert Bullock III. Andrew Bird. Jessica Humanis Chacon. Terica Danielle Chapman. Leanne Sink. Re Anna Clark. Santasia Coleman. Ethan Kaufhoff. Michaela Cook. Yes. Victoria Lee Cornstubble. Cortez. Carrie Lynn Cortez. Wesley Crosby. <laughs> Brittany Curry. Yeah. <laughs> Brittany Curtis. Deontay O'Quinn Cyprian. Cortisha Davis. Kelsey Desider. Jasmine Yvonne Dixon. Amanda Jubakuski. Crystals Eccles Covington. Laney Brooke Ely. Caitlin Brooke Farr. Christina Brooke Fisher. <laughs> Dwayne Flat Jr. Lashawn Foster. Leslie Folks. Courtney Ganey. Kiera Jane Gaynor. Trish Ginsimer. Caitlin George.
Kenyana Gilbert. Crisclin Graham. Patricia Grant. Carly Greisinger. Samantha Griffin. Abigail Brooke Grimes. Ariana Maria Guadagabi. Bailey Gayon. Chitaya Gwyn. Shania Nicole Hamilton. Hamilton. Josie Shea Harkins. <laughs> Allie Herndon. <laughs> Zach Hicks. Georgina Hildago. Brady Hill. Nicole Hill. Rebecca Swikert Howard. Trent Irby. <laughs> Victoria Kristen Jackson. <laughs> Summer Nicole Jackson. <laughs> Allison, Renee. Allison Renee Jackson. Lacey Nicole Jackson. Tamara Smith Jackson. Okay. Ready? Clovisha James. Clovisha James. Caitlin Jensen. Alexis B. Johnson. Russell Edward Johnson. Amy Lee Johnston. Ashley Kidd. Crystal Ann Kilpatrick. Leah M. King. Chloe Knowles. 
Can you say Tyler Reese for me? Tower Reese Kokori. Dominique Gordon Ladner. <laughs> Ashley Nicole Langley. Andrew Edward Lee. Sydney Rain Lee. Jackson Hyatt Lemon. Amanda Catherine Levins. Kayla Autumn Maria Madeira. Kiva Malone. Dejana Matthews. Serena Pa Misi. Jennifer Michelle Meredith. <laughs> Olivia Muherter. <laughs> Jemiah Miller. Diana Molkic. Sierra Morris. Arisha Nettles. Michael Odom. Alina Olger. <laughs> Veronica Polson. <laughs> Catherine Lynn Phillips. Jacqueline Place. <laughs> Nicole Peyton Priest. <laughs> Blakely Catherine Rapier. Catherine Annie Rollerson. Courtney Taylor Reed. Brianna Christine Rencher.
Marna Rivas. Jasmine Rivers. Lauren Rouse Stevens. Elisa Rudat. Gonara Santmeyer. Edward Schamberger. Susan Y. Sheffield. Savannah Small. Joshua Stahl. Bonnie Steele. Jacob Stockwell. Tasia Stokes. Zoe Alexis Sweeney. Shanika Thomas. Amber Michelle Thomas. Joshua Jude Thomas. Jasmine Tarvin. Cassidy Harding. <laughs> Troy Tippy. <laughs> Anna Torres. Caleb Hill Valry. <laughs> Lauren Elizabeth Volk. <laughs> Nicoria Brianne West. Bianca Alexandria White. Taylor Ann White. Bethany Mazingo Wiggins. Zoe Zandra Wilcox.
Angela Ladora Wilder. Angie. Nicholas Quinn Williams. Alexandria Bianca Williams. Taya Brianna Williams. Kimberly Ann Williams. Bridget Willis. Amberly Taylor Wilson. For those of you who enjoyed this so much, we have another one at five. <laughs> and you're certainly welcome to return. In the meantime, we've got a great, great congratulatory dinner for all of you. And we'd like you to be our guest right outside. Can't miss it. You'll see the tents. God bless you all. In the first chapter of Proverbs, verse 5, King Solomon, one of the wisest of the Hebrew leaders, proclaimed, A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel. For the last two years, you sought the direction and counsel of your faculty, the staff, and your loved ones. Graduates, as you transition to the next phase of life, continue to seek knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, and with, all, with God's grace, all will be well. Let us pray. God, our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together and to celebrate the accomplishments of these graduates. Heavenly Father, we thank you for bestowing in their hearts the love of knowledge, the love of wisdom, and more importantly, the love of you. As they move forward, we pray that you continue to be a fixture and a foundation in their lives. Keep them safe, nurture that love of knowledge, and use them to be a positive change in this world. And as we close the ceremony, Lord, we pray that your peace resides with these graduates, with their families, and with our Coastal Alabama family. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.